And next on stage is Strahil Chernev, head of BSS in Vivacom, a key employee in Vivacom, and an experienced telecommunications professional. He's here to give us the answer to a one very important question. Are we ready for 4G? Please give it up for Sir Hill. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you drink really your coffee and I'll try to speak on normal human language, not engineering one, in order at least to be not all of you sleeping at the end of my presentation. Uh, I have the pleasure to to talk about the future of mobile telecommunications. Everyone is having smartphone, tablets, you know that data consuming is all over the world, on the streets, in our house. So there are, I think, every one of you thinks that knows what is the data consumption, what is 4G, what is 3G, but I'm sure that you will find an interesting fact from my presentation. I divided the presentation in four parts. I will try to summarize the drivers which are pushing everyone to invest in 4G and to, to develop a new networks. Are we, the mobile operators, ready for 4G, especially here in Bulgaria? Are we, the users, ready for 4G? Because this is also an important question. And I will try to summarize what are the predictions for the near five years for 4G. Of course, I will make some conclusions. So, drivers to 4G. On this slide, this is the evolution of the networks. The most important thing here that should be noticed is that we are here with 3G, with average speeds on the streets of download up to 10 megabits. You know this is equal to our home LAN internet. But is this enough? Is this what we need? And why should we go to 4G and 4G advanced and to this really fast speeds? So the data trends in the world, you know, this is exabytes. You can see what is the prediction. This is taken from Cisco mobile white paper report. And you can see that the average growth will be at about 60% per year of the mobile data traffic, which is really huge increase. So I will try to correlate this, excuse me, some more interesting facts. 50% of the traffic is video traffic. So this means that every second person is watching a video. So this is generating a lot. Top 20% of the mobile users are generating more than 85% of the mobile traffic. So this means that not everyone is consuming a lot of data, only 20%. And 1% is generating 20% of the data, which is really interesting. For example, in Vivacom's network for 2013, 6% of the UMTS users, because we still do not have 4G, generated at least 50% of the traffic, which is quite a lot. And more than 25% of the users <laughs> does not generate any traffic at all, but they are on the data technology. So, another interesting thing from our network is that this is the trend of the voice traffic, 2014 and 2015. You know, the voice traffic is not increasing. So people are talking, but they are not talking more and more and more because probably they <laughs> forgot to talk from Facebook. But Facebook and video, this is the data traffic trend, and this is in terabytes in our network. So we have really big problem with the increasing data, and we have to solve it somehow. This complicated slide, <laughs> I wanted to show something very interesting. This part are the, smart, the smartphones in our network. So 70% of the devices in our network are smartphones. What does this mean? And this is the generated traffic from them. Half of the traffic is generated from smartphones. What I'm trying to show here is that these devices, the smartphones, really generate 
small amount of traffic. So this is important for us, the engineering guys, to make the traffic model. So we have a lot of traffic from many people, but small amount of traffic. So we have to take this into account when we are developing our networks. So the questions, are we, the operators, ready to do this? The key point is that we have to make software upgrades. Okay, these are <laughs> very complicated things, but the core network of our network is the brain. We have to upgrade it somehow in order to, to be able to implement the 4G. The access is uh, the base stations on the rooftops, which are providing us the coverage on the streets. We have to upgrade this too. We have to have a new planning and optimization tools because actually we have to know what to expect when implementing a network and we have to measure it somehow and optimize it. We have to define the new methods of measurements. This is very interesting because the regular, the regular engineering goes and measures FTP on the streets. FTP, I'm not sure, but I'm sure that you're aware of what is FTP, but Actually, the people are using, as you saw, video, Facebook, normal web browsing, and we have to find a way to test this, to see what is the end user experience, not the speed of the network in the radio part. We have to implement a new SIM cards. It's not just to switch on the 4G and you, the users, to have it. We have to give you, to give you a new SIM cards but only with SIM card, it's not possible. We have to give you a devices which are supporting 4G. So we have to test them to be sure that they are working properly in our networks. And the most important thing for us engineering guys is when we implement 4G, we do not have to disturb the existing technologies. So we, the users, we should not notice that a new technology is coming on top. What I'm trying to tell you is on this complicated slide. So this is the 2G, the green line. This is the 3G. So you can see how complicated networks are these. These are totally, these are totally different networks and they are interworking. And we have to implement a third one to interwork with the existing two. And you should experience only a benefit from that. This is a big challenge to us. So one of the main problems of 4G when we implement it here is that the 4G does not have yet a voice call, except, of course, the possibility to use over-the-top apps like Viber, Skype, which are pure data apps. So we have to make the users, when they are here with phone, because we saw previously that 70% of the people are using phones, you will not go on the streets with phone and tablet to use 4G. When I try to call you to be able to receive the call somehow. So this is a big challenge. As I said, 2G, 3G are voice and data services, 4G is only for data, browsing. Voice calls have to be redirected. Okay, so we need five to seven seconds when I am making a call to someone and I am on 4G. It's quite easy, the network is not involved at all. I'm deciding to cross the street, I'm crossing the street. But mobile terminating call is when somebody is calling me, someone He's told me, cross the streets. I will try to find a way to cross the street and I have to cross it. It takes at about eight seconds. And the most important thing is that if the two parts of the connections are on 4G, the connection will be at least 10 seconds. This is the time when after calling, you will hear the ringtone. So this is a big challenge to us. But are we, the users, ready? Okay, we saw that we, the operators, have to do a lot of work. The users, some facts from July 2015. Available devices on the market in the world, more than 3,000. Of course, a big part of these are in Asia. More than 1,700 smartphones. Okay, perfect. But do we need a 4G? Because as I see, the 4G, from my point of view, is related to capacity, not to throughput and speeds. Everyone is watching its video. Everything is perfect. 
this is the average speed per subscriber, 1.6 megabits in 2014, which is quite good. It's enough for our smartphones because when you're watching a video from YouTube, for example, the YouTube app knows exactly what is your screen, what is your resolution on your phone, and it will not let you a video for a 52-inch television screen. It will give you a video for your particular capabilities of your device. As we said, 1% of the, of the mobile data subscriber are generating 18% of the traffic. So actually, the capacity is our problem. The capacity is purely related to the speeds. 4G in the five next years, please stay <laughs> awake, I am finishing. Whoop. So, logical, 31% of the devices will be 4G in 2019. The 2G devices will go down up to 21. So, one very interesting fact. This is the data trend prediction. Video will stay main part of the traffic. More than 70% of the traffic will be video in 2019. And one very interesting fact here, the Western Europe will have less growth of the traffic than the Central and Eastern Europe. So I do not have idea why is this prediction, but we'll see. And what are the conclusions? Of course, this is the fa fastest growing technology. 62 networks are implemented in 2015. More than 1,000 terminals were introduced Latency is one of the big benefits, not the speed. Everything is happening really fast. If someone of you was using a data modem, you have to find your network, you have to click connect, you have to wait at about five, 10 seconds for the procedures in order to register to the network. In 4G, you just click and you're connected. So we need capacity, as I said, not speed. And the most important thing, we need a new apps, a new services. And this is, this is the chance of the new developers. So we need your help in order to push the users to use 4G because with existing apps, we use 3G. So how we will make the people to use 4G? That was from me. I hope <laughs> that it was really interesting and Thank you for your attention.